Today we have two speakers. First we will have Jessica. She will tell us more about the, the Chinese culture and the cultural differences. Jessica moved to the Netherlands two years ago. She is the owner of China Talk and teacher of Chinese culture and language at a number of secondary schools in the Netherlands. And she also works as a translator and uh, is giving trainees, trainings to companies. So, Jessica, I invite you to come forward and uh, learn us more about the Chinese culture. Thank you. Okay, I will have a short uh, self-introduction. My name is uh, Jessica Sun. Of course, this name I choose myself. <laughs> and my real name is Sun Hui. It's Chinese, and uh, I just write it down. Here. During my work with uh, uh, foreigners, and I noticed that it's very difficult for them to remember Sun Hui, so I just choose Jessica. And I was born in China and uh, grew up in China until two years ago, so I was real Chinese. And uh, now I was teaching in several Dutch schools. I mean, myself, as a Chinese, as an original Chinese, come to Western and experience the culture difference and even the culture shock. And uh, now I would like to share with you from my perspective what culture difference it is and what my experience, and that would be now what you experience from other side, that's two worlds, and how we can understand each, each other better and to cooperate with each other better. I also talked with one of your colleagues and he gives a very typical like phenomena when you cooperate with Chinese people, like during meeting and during the, like all sort of uh, contact. Okay, and in the future 45 minutes around, we will talk about what does uh, cultural difference really mean? It's like, what is cultural difference? Is that because of the whole 5,000 years history or what, what's this cultural difference it is? And what problems do you uh, come across when you cooperate with Chinese people? Even more is that, is there a solution? The last is the most important terms in Chinese culture. I think most of the question, like I get also from other, uh, other lectures, is that after these terms, you might understand better what's the, what's the core idea about this culture and why those uh, uh, phenomena happen when you cooperate with Chinese uh, uh, customers or colleagues. If you, uh, for example, you say, oh, this is something I come across. If you say, oh, this is something I find familiar when I uh, talk with my Chinese colleagues or whatever, just raise up hand and also tell other people. And uh, I think it's more in one, one company, it's more recognizable. And first, uh, we, will, we will see the culture difference from several pictures. And you will go to guess what this would be. We're from a simple one. One is in China and another in the uh, West. Yeah, this is uh, too simple for technic people. <laughs> and this is the uh, population, of course. And that comes with a lot of the uh, consequences. If you go to China, you might be noticed that there a lot of Chinese people, they don't, they don't stand in the queue. And you might understand why they don't respect the public rules, because the population brings very, very heavy concurrence from competition from each other. So if you are a bit like break up the rules and then you will get more benefit. It's very simple, like uh, uh, 10 people were waiting for the bus. And one people say, oh, I will not get in the queue. I will just run a bit quick. And he is the one first get on the bus and maybe he will get a seat. And uh, who obey the rules, who waiting on the queue, you might need to wait for the next bus and you might stand for, in China, if you take the public transportation, you might stand for 10 kilometers or whatever. So a simple, um, a simple picture or a simple just effect will bring a lot of concurrency in the culture. And uh, this? Yeah. I would do three hot meals in China. And I find it so miserable when I, when I get up and I need to drink the cold milk from the, <laughs> from the fridge and eat uh, the bushaud or what that. Uh, so I find in the, in the morning, I need to drink a cup of warm water and to uh, eat some uh, pancakes of, of ervin soup. That's, that's my typical Chinese breakfast. So warm. It's also when you get, when you, uh, when you get uh, cold 
or when you get a bit sick. And your Chinese colleagues might always come to you say, drink more hot water. And you will think, what does hot water will help? But we think the hot water is everything. It will cure you. And we thought, oh, you drink cold cola and you still can get cold. I don't think you will ever get better. So about the eating habits and this. Your kids like it then? Yeah. Did you ever, uh, from where you you say this? I heard it from a Chinese colleague. Oh, or is your Chinese colleague once asked you to bring some cream? No. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Chinese people think that if you white, that's very beautiful, and. Uh, Western people think if you have dark skin, that's beautiful, that's healthy, beautiful, and uh, probably you rich and have a lot of vacations or so. And um, there is a one um, sort of joke. Our neighbors say I'm moving to um, Deutschland and Germany, and they said because we helped from moving and uh, something else, they said, oh, Jessica, I have a nice uh, gift for you because we don't want to move that around. We gave it to you. I said, oh, what is that? I saw it's, um, you know, the bed. You can lie in there and you get sunshine and you will get, uh, you, yeah, you will get beautiful. And the more important, the name is Beauty Bed. <laughs> I think, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> So that's uh, also a lot of adver uh, advertisement or the uh, advertisement for the cream of the white and cream. And a lot of people, they come to Europe, they buy a lot of those products because they think that's beautiful. And that happens like this. In uh, Holland and some people, they uh, say, oh, they already maybe uh, one week before they began to check which they have the... Uh, the brightest the sun. Let's go out, wear a bikini, and enjoy in sunshine. But we think, no, 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 no. We have a little shade walking under. We don't want to get dark. We don't really like uh, the bright sunshine. That's also a habit. And this one. In China, kids is the center of family. Here is more eco. Super. <laughs> yeah. So, so this kid. <laughs> So this kid in the Western, they just as one of the member of this family, they working all together in one direction. But in China, this kid is the center of the family. Everybody will surround this kid. The kid is the center, is the future, is, is everything of this family. So all of the issues of family will be centered with this, uh, with this kid. To, to me, to my understanding, that's about cultural difference. That's not about we have 5,000 years history and uh, what kind of uh, lore you have experienced. That's about how we think, how we eat, and uh, just uh, the, for a family, how they work. So this is a cultural difference in our daily life. In fact, if you cooperate with your colleagues and maybe for everything, that's, that's just uh, have a Chinese uh, cultural background. What's a, what's a cultural difference? If you didn't notice a cultural difference, what will happen? The English believe it's a slur on your host's food if you don't clear your plate. Whereas the Chinese feel you're questioning their generosity if you do. At HSBC, we never underestimate the importance of local knowledge. Which is why we have local banks staffed by local people in over 80 countries across the globe. Okay. HSBC, the world's local bank. Yeah, I find this one of the most funny cultural difference videos I've ever seen. And uh, this is what will happen if you don't notice the cultural difference. But from this video, what have you learned? What you can do better? Just do it in the local. 
Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's smart. When you don't know what will happen, you just sit and watch. You don't, oh, let me first finish the first one. You don't know what will happen. So for this kind of things, if you sit around with Chinese customer or Chinese uh, colleagues, and for this, this part, you just sit and watch what they do and you do. And it's like you, you go into a, a traffic, you don't know and where to, uh, where to, want to go across the zebra line or want to wait. You don't know, you just, you just go with the flow. When they walk, you walk. When they wait, you wait. That's the best way to do, I mean, they, for this part. But some of the others, you need to think yourself. You can just not do what they do. So for this part, this, uh, this suggestion still works. And also for a bit uh, more about eating. In, in China, you don't know most of the time what is really the, the meat or what, what is in the dish. So you always ask. You always ask your colleagues or, or whoever can, uh, can help you. You don't know that the intestines or the stomach or the <laughs> or a lot of things you can just not imagine if you've never been to China. So always ask. And that's also about the culture difference. If, if you always bring the right question, that will be a good start. That will be fine. Okay. I've heard a lot from the, not, not a strange question, but a lot of foreigners, they told me that they work with their Chinese uh, colleagues and uh, uh, if they do a brainstorm and their Chinese colleagues just uh, sit there and to wait and to listen, they think they don't really cooperate and they don't think they want to contribute to the group work. And uh, also, uh, a, a sort of a boss. They, they said one they he came he fly all the way go to China have a meeting with all the colleagues and uh, the managers from all kind of levels, and said what is the problem now eh, in this uh, in this uh, Chinese office, and no, no problem. Everything's fine. All the meetings, all is perfect. All goes well. And uh, he said, yeah, that's good. Yeah, we have, have no problem. Let's just continue to do so. But when he get back, on, when he just uh, uh, take a taxi, go to the airport, and come all the emails says, oh, this is not good. That is not good. This is, we have a problem. Maybe you need to look at this. I recognize that one. OK. <laughs> but I don't understand. So you don't understand. OK. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, any other? So we have a start of maybe other, other phenomena. You know that's strange. Let's say just you find that strange, but you don't know why. I had to go to China for a week to read some new software. Yeah, I was supposed to get one week to finish it. Mm -hmm. Two days they already start asking for giving me software right now. Mm. Yeah, that's about the time of uh, planning or, or using, yeah. Okay, first about this time is that Chinese people, we don't really plan. Because the society just changes so fast, you cannot plan. We have a saying is that 计划赶不上变化, so the planning is always behind what will happen. So, and also because of the uh, opening up policy and the society, just the, there are full of opportunities. But what you need to do is to get there and this moment to, to get this opportunity is not planning. Because if you plan and the, the chance will be gone. So that's how the people thinking of the, of the planning. And, but there's one thing we are good at is that we're catching the deadline. If you say, I need this tomorrow, and they will, they will do that tomorrow. They will, they will get everything ready tomorrow. So for the, for the maybe Westerners, if you say, I need this tomorrow, and your colleagues, your Western colleagues maybe will you say, what, where are you? And what, why, what do you think of this tomorrow? And why don't you tell me like one week before so I can plan? But we don't, we don't say this plan, what's well, so important of the plan. We just say, if we do it, we do it, and we do it quick. Maybe tomorrow there will be something new. There will be a new opportunity. So that's about how they put priority for the time. Is this clear? A bit? I, I think Chinese also expect you to be uh, showing the same flexibility uh, in terms of time. If they say, can you stay for the weekend or can you stay a few days more? They expect that you do it, where here in Europe you say, no, I already have my plans. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe more more in a structural way, but they they really are upset that you do not show this flexibility. That's what I experience. I also heard of one one people they want to visit a Chinese factory. They said, "Can we make a plan in 2000? Can we make a, like an appointment in 2016 September? We want to visit your factory." And from a Western perspective, we tell you so long before, so you can prepare. But what they get a very astonishing answer is that. I see you next year. We don't know what will happen. Call me like one week before. <laughs> and and the Western partner maybe think one week before we cannot do that in social term. But this is how how the culture difference. But there is always a solution. So you tell them what is your plan, and you keep confirming with them your plan. So you sort of reminding them it's still five months. You can tell them, okay, now we are already planning to go this. We are one hundred percentage go. So we will tell you half a year, half a year later, maybe in the beginning of two thousand sixteen, and then you still tell them we are still planning to do this. So if you can prepare something, you prepare, and another three months tell them again, and one month until the last week. So they will keep reminding, and they know you are serious.